Collector's Club with Bryce and Michael. <laughs> I know a ghost story or two. Let's do this. <laughs> Whoa, that's just like being back in the clubhouse. We're sitting here listening right. to the intro in our headphones just like we used to do. Uh, and that makes me feel very, very good. This makes no sense to people who haven't been recording the show with us for the past year in quarantine. <laughs> we're still doing it virtually, but uh, we're working with some new toys. Uh, does Riley, tell us what's going on. Well, we've been using Zencaster this whole time to record remotely, and they're not a sponsor, so I'm just talking about them uh, honestly. But they've uh, upgraded to video recording now, and there's a soundboard where I can play cues, Ooh. and uh, they've really upped their game. And uh, yeah, so this is our first try on it, and it seems like everything's going great. Yeah, I mean, with I'm ex- faces like these, why should we be limited to audio only? I mean, come on. What are we talking about here? That's what, yeah. Bryce, I know, and we haven't really been looking at each other much. Bryce, you look like a you look like a a, a young Joey Pantalone character. <laughs> you look like you should be Joey. Like you could you Joey could play Pants, young Joey Pants. That. All right, good. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome back. It's the one hundred and fiftieth episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we wow. Uh, talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson. And our super producer, Riley Bray. Guys, congratulations on 150 <laughs> and then some episodes. That's, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> crazy. Because uh, we did, we we have like eight L-File episodes that were bonus episodes before we started the Patreon. Uh, Bigfoot Collectors right. Club, the other side. Um, mm-hmm. So this is probably technically like maybe our 159th or 160th episode, but it's our 150th regularly numbered episode. And uh, tonight we're going to do something special. We're doing our first Zencaster video uh, that if all goes well, we'll throw this up on the Patreon. If it doesn't, there won't be anything there. Um, so if you want to watch this, go to <laughs> patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club and join us there on the other side uh and uh no guest for this week i wanted to celebrate this anniversary with my bigfoot boys so here we are yeah i love that <laughs> celebrate this anniversary the same way we've celebrated every other holiday this year alone in our rooms <laughs> it's, yep. uh, it's very fitting very fitting for <laughs> yeah everyone. i like it yeah, congrats, dudes. I can't believe I honestly cannot believe that that we've made 150 of these. Plus, I think like just as many on the on the other side. Yeah, right? there's, there's, a good we're, there's at least 150 over there. I think we're now I at did like not know what I was signing up for. <laughs> we're at like 300 episodes of, you know, and some some on the other side are oh, shorter wow. episodes. But like, you know, we've got around, God. I think, especially since our some of our episodes go two hours, we've probably got around 350 hours of content that we've we're made, like those, uh, which is like those crazy. nice time life book series like uh, Mystery. Yeah. Movie <laughs> yeah. We've got our own little own little shelf now. Yeah. It would take like 11 days nice. to listen to the entire BCC catalog back to back. It would be, you know, like I would uh, rather not. Thank you. <laughs> or count to, or count to a million. That's your choice. Yeah. You either count yeah. to a million for 11 days or listen to us straight oh, for all that God. time. Um, well, fun. thank wow. you. Thank you. Uh, we're excited. We're glad to be sharing this with you, the listeners. So we got some fun and games planned. I thought we would kick off this episode with a little... CC news. And even with sound cues and video, we still. I'm not will hearing shit. I didn't hear the really. sound, the song intro either. So I don't. What? You didn't, Michael? Did you? Hell hear yeah, it? yeah. Michael was jamming out. Yeah, I felt a little. Sounds great. Out. You didn't hear it? No, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. It was really Shout good. To, it was good. Uh, oh, so you were just you just went in blind. I went in blind. You were just you know what are you gonna do? <laughs> wow. Yeah. He used right, those we'll get there. We'll leading get there. man instincts to. <laughs> to get yeah. him there yeah um huh well guys this was a story that's been floating around for a couple weeks uh it's way over my head 
Uh, but I think we have to talk about it based on the headline alone. And don't worry, I originally found this story on Scientific American thought or popular mechanics was like, mm-hmm. I don't understand any of this. So I went to vice.com, which is where I get a lot of my science these days, and they compare it to uh, weed. Uh, this, this story <laughs> reads, scientists have proposed a new particle that is a portal to a fifth dimension. Yeah. Nice. I saw Trippy, this. Man. Yeah. Science the path- is finally catching up to our podcast. That's right. This is like the old uh, <laughs> big science biblical adage about like it's easier for a rich man to cross the gates of heaven than it, you know it's easier to slip a camel through the eye of a needle than it mm. is for a rich man mm-hmm. to get into heaven. Mm-hmm. We're about to find out that like Bigfoot slipping through particles to get to his home dimension. Uh, yeah. The the path to dark matter and other fundamental enigmas may be through a warped extra dimension, according to a new study that proposes a theory of the universe. Scientists want to search for a hypothetical particle that can act as a portal to a warped fifth dimension that medit- that mediates the cosmic realms of light and dark. Mm. It's very Lord of the Rings already. Wow. Yeah, I like it. You would be forgiven for assuming that sent that that sentence is a science fiction synopsis, but it is actually the mind boggling upshot of a recent study that seeks to illuminate some of the most persistent enigmas in science. The existence of this speculative particle could provide a natural explanation for the abundance of dark matter, an unidentified substance that accounts for most of the universe's mass and resolve intractable problems about subatomic subatomic particles known as fermions, according to the new research which was published last month in the European Physical Journal C. The study adds that the presence of new physics can explain these fundamental mysteries by presenting a model of the universe with a fifth dimension that can be traversed by particles. Hmm. The study was authored by Javier Castellano and Matthias Newbert, theoretical physicists at the Prisma Plus Cluster of Excellence. That is a fucking... That sounds like a school on the moon. The Prisma (laughs) Plus Cluster of Excellence. It's like... It's like Professor X teaches there. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's located. I love new physics too. It's like, hey, man. Sorry to interrupt. New. Oh, you're into physics? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm into into new physics, but, you know. Just like the X Men again. There's a a comic, The New Mutants. You know what I mean? This is very, all very Marvel. Uh, That, uh, the the Prisma Plus Cluster of Excellence is located at Johannes Gutenberg's University Mines, Mains, and Adrian Carmona, an Athena our three I fellow at the department of theoretical physics and the cause and the cosmos at the university of Granada. Okay. I barely understood that sentence. These are strange titles. Yeah. yeah. We've been working on a similar topic for quite some time. Said the team in an email, our initial motivation was to explain the possible origin of fermion masses in theories with a warped extra dimension. We mm. knew that the masses of these constituents had some special features, which were crying out for explanation. The researchers are part of a long scientific tradition that questions whether the four dimensions that humans can comprehend, 3D space and time, are really all the universe has to offer. This line of research has produced five-dimensional field equations that express the implications an extra dimension would have on the universe and reality itself. I'll throw up the article in the show notes, of course, but uh, I just fucking love... Uh, this idea that there might be a particle that leads to this warped fifth dimension. Yeah. The portal particle. Well, the portal it's, it's particle. Here, here's where uh, Bryce Johnson tries to explain new physics. So it sounds Uh-oh. like <laughs> it sounds like they're saying that this 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 unknown particle, this hypothetical particle, um, predicts whether. Um, you know, something's going to have a uh, dark mass or regular light. Right. So you might, you guys remember that big, like Higgs boson particle, they called it the, they sure. called it the God yes. particle. And they called it that because they, they thought that that particle might, um, might give credence to what molecules and what particles would become. So it almost, it almost like assigned what particles would become like you're going to be carbon and, and you're going to be hydrogen. And that's why they called it the God particle, right? Because it assigned property. It Mm -hmm. sounds like this particle assigns whether, 
you know, these uh, other particles are going to be part of the dark mass uh, or, or part of the, the light world. And so dark matter. Yeah. Dark matter. Right. That's a great, I love that. It's a great interpretation of that. I that's, think that, that's really that's what they're, cool they're really to trying to actually like dark matter. They believe exists as far as I understand, but they haven't been able to like prove it because we can't see it. Right. And it would help explain some laws of gravity and physics that they quite can't account for. Yeah. And that they think this yeah. hypothetical particle would lead to the discovery and the confirmation of dark matter basically and how yeah. it interacts with the particles that we currently know um well, this exactly is all right because yeah. they all the, everybody all the scientists pretty much they they really feel confident that dark matter exists and that it you know takes up like the oceans yeah. of earth like 70 percent of the known universe which is just incredible mm-hmm. and it's not just it's not just nothing. It's not just no space, but it has properties of its own, you know? Uh, so it's fast. Yeah, it has I, mass. I, yeah. I, yeah. I think as science continues to go on, we're going to find I, more than five dimensions, more than five dimensions. I think it'll just keep uh, ticking up there. Oh, is it supposed to be like 11, like Brian Green talked about the, super uh, yeah, the super theory. string theory. There might be 11 dimensions. It's been a long time since I've, dove yeah. dove into uh string theory i think i was in college when i was last talking about that which is it was really trendy for a yeah. minute there string theory it had a moment yeah i wonder it was like in the eat pray love theory <laughs> of, of uh, culture it was the eat pray love of astrophysics and quantum physics <laughs> it totally was i we're calling that but they s- i just love about dark matter it's like sorry i can't move on from dark yeah because yeah, i would like it's just so funny that we're like, so like, okay, the universe, we like, have a pretty good understanding, except for about 90% of <laughs> right. it. We have no idea. Totally. I just like love what that says about like us and our understanding, but also that we're willing to accept that is like, okay, we understand this little part, but there's so much more than this little part. And we're just, there's, there's still so much more. Yeah. To well, and that's yeah, why I like this story because it does sort of, and again, like Bryce pointed out the Higgs boson, and they talk about it in this, you know, that was theoretical up until a few years ago, I think like 2011 or 12. So the, they, they could like really figure this out w- within the next couple of years and find this thing. They might be able to use something like the, uh, the, what's the name of the big collider in the, the particle collider and uh, he, uh, um, large, the, the, the Halliday. Yeah. yeah. He, Halodrome? I think it's like the some he, he he drawn drawn? Yeah, the one that people the one that everyone the conspiracy theorists are afraid are gonna is gonna open up a black yeah. hole and swallow CERN. us whole. But yeah. it's at the CERN laboratory. Yeah, in in, in in Geneva, Switzerland, I think. Yeah, so I, it's cool, and I I like it because it just I love it when science gets weird, and it's like and there, dude, we're talking there's about so much more out there than we know about. <laughs> yeah, let's get we're down to brass about, tacks We're talking here. about fucking portals here. <laughs> portals. And, you know, it's portal started, science. It's portal science. When yeah. we started this podcast. <laughs> about time. Yeah, portals, people were like, ah, oh, you know, that's a great theory. But pretty soon it's going to be like, you know, boom, Bigfoot goes through portals. We can prove it. Bigfoot yeah. is, com- what if all these c- cryptids are composed of dark matter that when they cross yeah. over into our dimension become visible? I don't know. Yeah, sure. I think I'm understanding science overlap. (laughs) (laughs) That's science, right? That's science, right? (laughs) And that's what we call new physics. That'll work. New (laughs) physics, bro. Get used to it. BCCs. Oh my God. Uh, Your new science teacher. Oh God. Uh, But anyway, I just think it's a cool article. You can check it out in the show, uh, show notes. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Final thoughts on, on, on the particle uh, portal science. I mean, I'm always excited by it. I always a little bit don't understand yeah. it. Oh, but yeah. also always seems Nobody like, they're like it. we came up with a new way of thinking about things, which I guess is all anything is. But it's I, I love it. I'm into it. Yeah, let's find that fifth dimension. But it seems like it's the unknowable edge, maybe. You know, you know? What? But we should always yeah. chase it. Well, that warped fifth dimension could be like the spirit realm. It could be where we maybe our consciousness travels through, you know, the fourth uh, crosses the fourth dimension and goes into that side. And then suddenly you're seeing all of space time from the outside. You know, I, I think, you, you know, what uh, I love uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it seems to be like it beckons to me like this user created universe. Right. So there's all these particles that are still we don't know about and we 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 suggest that they exist and there's 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 a bunch of them right and as soon as we're sort of like give yeah. name to one or we start thinking about it more boom it pops into existence and then we can find it like the higgs boson and 
And I love that they're just like, well, maybe there's a portal particle. And then, you know, yeah, good one, Steve. And then, you know, like 10 <laughs> years later, they're like, portal particle. And so it's almost like. Good, found I mean, it. I found it. It's right yeah, here. Look it. right I under my finger. It. Portal <laughs> portal particle, yo. So it's almost like. We'll call it the Steve, the Steve portal, portal particle. particle. <laughs> But, you know, it makes me think that perhaps maybe that, you know, the more we give attention to these things and, and, and put our thoughts into it, perhaps the universe manifests it and uh, and bends it to our to our will. You know, I don't know. Strange. I, wa- I love it. I wonder I how many it. scientists are named Steve. At least 30 percent. A good yeah. handful. I'm yeah. sure. All right. <laughs> oh, you go. 30 percent. One high third estimate. of scientists <laughs> yeah. are named Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they won't go by Steve. Steve. They'll, Not they'll Steven. I suggest you say Steven, but but really. At home, no, I think they have to go by Steve. That's my point. They have <laughs> oh, to go okay. by Steve. Right. Oh, this has gone yes. off track. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> we'll move on from that uh, to our next segment, which I'm kind of looking forward to in lieu of having a guest today. Uh, I, I reached out on Twitter and Instagram. And I asked our dear listeners if they had any lingering questions about any of our stories of high strangeness over the past 150 episodes. I got a few of those, but then I I think some of the listeners sort of took some artistic liberty, which is great, and branched out into just general questions that I don't think we've addressed on our big Q&A episode over on the other side, which as of right now, it's still available uh, to listen to. Uh, it was We put, put up on last November, but it's going to go down very shortly. So check that out if you haven't listened to it yet. Um, but I thought what I would do is just pull up my Instagram and scroll through some of these questions. This is very high right. tech. This is like sort of what you do on Expedition Bigfoot, Bryce. I've got this massive uh, computer in front of me, and um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put together an algorithm. Do it. Um, it's almost almost the same. Same thing. Almost yeah. Same. And and let's check out some of these questions and see uh, what what answers lurk in the dark recesses of our of the dark matter of our minds. Okay. So Cloven Tongue asks. First of all, I don't trust you. I don't. I don't trust you. You're clearly the serpent in the garden. Um, as a group, have you guys ever thought about this? Is right out of the gate. Ever thought about going to one of those DMT retreats in South America? Maybe after COVID is over, it can be on an on location with BCC special. Mm. You know, I not mean, as a. I mean, yes, yes, I've thought about it. You know, I I kind of have. As if, let me just get my kids through school first. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. <laughs> Before daddy's brain goes to the, to the por- through a portal particle. Let me just finish my obligation and responsibility, and then Brycey go bye bye time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, let's let's leave it yeah. at that. Yeah. That's kind of what I. Let's you know. I don't go ahead, Riley. I don't know if it's a group. I mean, also, I don't see myself going to South America anytime soon. Uh, you know, maybe it's not a group, a group trip. It seems like that's more of a solo. solo I, you know what? I disagree. Yeah. I think, um, actually right. years ago I went to a couple like checked out, uh, a friend of a friend had gone down and done an ayahuasca retreat in, in, uh, either Peru, um, or down in the Amazon forest somewhere. I can't remember where this particular group was located, but I remember they had like a meeting at the at the Universal Sheridan Hotel in Universal City here. Oh, wow. And I and I went and I just kind of listened to like what they did. And it was like one of those things where it's like you sign up, you go down, they have a shaman there and you do basically I think like you do like you stay down there for a week. You're in like the rainforest and you would do like three trips over the course of a week. Yeah. So you'd right. like do one, kind of cleanse yourself the next day, do it again, cleanse yourself the next day, do it again, and then and then come back home. And the thing that people would talk about was like how they felt like the plant was calling them. They kind of like the the my friend basically, or the friend of a friend was like, I had just the sense that I was supposed to go do this, you know. And um, and he was a very like very successful, functioning, full, full, capable adult has had a, uh, he's an actor with a fucking sl- great career. Um, didn't go off on the deep end on this stuff at all, you know, and this didn't feel really culty or anything, but, um, 
Yeah, they would just go down and do this and then do like ayahuasca and have these trips and then talk about the next day, like what they had, what their trip was like and what they learned. And he really emphasized that like he felt this plant consciousness made contact with him. And then that carried through in his day to day life after that, you know, and he would go back down every now and then just to sort of like commune with this consciousness. And I was very fascinated by it. Um, I chickened out of going. I was just a little too weirded out. Um, I mean, the one thing, if you're doing it as a group, you are going to probably throw up and maybe shit in a bucket next to somebody. So we'd all have to be comfortable with like the purging around one another. But I I actually think if it was a controlled group like that, and if it wasn't sketchy and we weren't crossing any like sketchy cultural lines, you know, but like by going down to the Amazon rainforest and be like, give me some ayahuasca. Um, then I would, I would be open to it, but I, 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 right now it still scares me a little bit. I think you were right not to treat it as a, as recreational. I mean, it's, from what I understand, they're yeah. very, it's a very profound experience and you need to go in there with, with serious intention, whether you want to work on something, work on yourself or, or have an experience, you know, there, there, there needs to be some intent there. It can't just be laissez faire, you know? And I think the shaman's there to sing the Icaros. I think it's called to kind of keep you going through that journey. And if they see you're having a bad trip, they're there to kind of help you get through it. And I've heard of people who've done it here in the States or done it recreationally without a shaman. And that just sounds like a bad idea. Also, I think some of these organizations are scams. So you have to be careful. Uh, about it so you know what maybe one day maybe not for a podcast but maybe we could talk about it after afterward but i still think it's like illegal for us to go do it so we'd have to kind of be quiet about it i think my name's damien and i just got my shaman license off the internet (laughs) (laughs) so now my my house or my casa is an actual church so i just got this new release and i brought in some ayahuasca and it's totally legal (laughs) <laughs> wait, wait wait so you're saying there's there's hippies that will uh scam you into uh ayahuasca ceremonies? no it's, it's a shaman what do you mean? i'm not a hippie i'm shaman oh shaman. right right okay. suburban <laughs> shaman dot com is where you got your license <laughs> <laughs> certified <Certifiable>, baby. <laughs> Here, All right, what else here's a got, quickie. Michael? We spent 20 minutes on this. A, this is a quickie. Uh, Stephen Meyer Jr. asks, are there any episodes about the Chupacabra? I haven't heard one yet. Well, Stephen Meyer, yes. you haven't listened to our entire back catalog because there's a very great episode about the Chupacabra, one of my favorite episodes. Uh, oh Bryce, Bryce does it. Tom Lank is our guest. It's episode 34. Uh, wow. so as Wolf Mungus pointed out in the comments, so go check that out. We've definitely covered the Chupacabra. Um, Brujo Sereno says, how would you describe high strangeness at its most basic? Mm. You're a real basic high strangeness bitch. Well, <laughs> so for me, high strangeness is, is something that, that exists on the, on the perimeter of oddity itself. Right. So you have all the, whether it's the UFO contact D experience, the abduct, the abduction phenomena, the, the, the Bigfoot phenomenon, high strangeness to me is, is stuff that, that sort of lives on the edge. It's the things that, that doesn't fit into, into somebody's box. Right. So whether that's a strange detail about a, about a, about a sighting, or uh, or little men wearing spacesuits and jumpers. That's high strangeness to me. Um, I guess it's really it's anything out of the ordinary uh, in the paranormal world. You know, might be a better way to put it. I don't know. What What do you guys think, Riley? Mm, I would say it. I would say it's uh, accounts or events that can't be explained by traditional logic or like known existing factors Mm. you know just like anything that's like that is a a quantifiable but unexplainable you know Uh, or or where it contains connections that are beyond just the basic facts of the moment you know like a deeper kind of 
realm connection. I like that. Yeah, I think that's all. Gr- I think these are all great. I I've always considered it to be high. Okay, so you got your basic strangeness, which is like seeing a UFO or having a Bigfoot encounter. The high strangeness is then that kicking up a notch, like the Bigfoot turns invisible or the alien comes out and makes you pancakes. You know, not That's technically funny. not all of our stories of high strangeness, I think, actually fit into the high strangeness category. Although, as right. we've learned, the more you de- dig into it, sometimes the strangers the story gets like Ape Canyon is a perfect example we've talked about on the show recently where, OK, Bigfoot's attacking a cabin and a bunch of like miners or prospectors strange, but then the prospectors having found that Canyon based upon like guided messages from an angelic spirit that led them there. High strangeness, right? Yeah. So it's There's when you kick it up, shit. you kick it up like that, that extra, cool. ex- extra notch and you're in that juicy high strangeness, uh, place. <laughs> um, high strangeness is juicy. Yeah. It's gotta be yeah. juicy. And uh, and typically involves weird costumes. I feel yeah. like, you know, <laughs> an alien strange, an alien wearing a clown costume, high strangeness. Right. For like sure. the I'm more absurd that. it is, the more highly strange it becomes in my in my yep. mind. Uh, Night Guys podcast says, "Do you believe our consciousness exists outside of our body?" Uh, and do you think ancient spirits, ghosts like Neanderthals are not documented because they've had so much more time to move on? Love the podcast. Cheers to 150. Thank you, Night Guys podcast. Mm. So what do you Riley, think? Why don't you Consciousness exists outside the body. First question. I don't think that my consciousness exists outside of my body. I can't speak for everyone else's consciousness because I can't experience them. I think you can project your consciousness out of your body. And I've definitely experienced that, like where I'm conscious, but I'm not in my body. I mean, everyone experiences that, I guess, when you dream. So I guess that I am now I am speaking for everyone. <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> just roll that over. Um so but no i feel like yeah a little i feel a little bound to my meat computer but like where i came from before that the spark seems other uh but this particular in- incarnation i feel like feels confined to this to that six um, foot seven hunk of meat hunk of meat hey there. baby <laughs> well, this is the big question, right? This, uh, is, this is what it all comes down yeah. to. I mean, this is this is the big this is the big Kahuna, right? And uh, and is it mind before matter or matter before mind? And I believe that it's mind before matter. That that our brain, this meat suit, is just a receiver, and we receive our consciousness from elsewhere. Uh, I, I, look, I, I think. I think this whole ball of wax is going to come down to consciousness and our understanding of it. We know nothing about it today. And, uh, and I think once we get a, a firm grasp on what it is, where it comes from and how it works, we're going to stand, we're going to understand all this crazy shit, uh, that takes place and, and what reality actually is. I mean, it's the same question, right? Is there a God, right? So it's like, what started before there was nothing who made nothing, you know, would did, was there a mind there that created matter? And, uh, or what is it? Our brains that, that just concocted this sort of, uh, epi- epiphenephral consciousness. I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and you know what, there's good data to suggest that, that the consciousness does survive bodily death. Even, you know, um, there's some great literature out there that would suggest that, that people's consciousness does survive. Yeah, I think it comes down to the way you frame the question, right? So, do I think consciousness exists outside the body? I'm sort of with I'm I'm in both camps actually. Like w- no, not in this dimension. I think that the consciousness is piloting these bodies that we're in. Uh and I think you can take the pilot out of the aircraft, so to speak, but but the pilot is in this aircraft until our bodies, until we die. Um, 
is it possible that there's that's a good yeah. is it possible that like again where did the pilot come from so maybe we existed our consciousness exists outside in that fifth dimension or higher dimension and then drops down here through the birth process whatever that is and then um through the death process goes recedes back to wherever we came from but I think while we're here, we're pretty much it here and our consciousness is in these bodies. And I think that that causes a lot of neuroses. I think it causes a lot of like feelings of separation when we're really all sort of linked by one giant conscious thing, you know? Um, I think we, mm-hmm. like Riley says, I think maybe it's possible for some people to project their consciousness. And then I definitely think that it's, um, possible to manifest our consciousness in art, in things that we create, in actions. And I think that really the reality that we're in is so heavily influenced by the by the manifestations of everybody's thoughts and feelings and consciousness, you know? So there is a as above, so below aspect to that. So in an abstract sense, yes. In a concrete sense, I think no. Does that... It- it up. does. I just yeah. want to say one more thing. I always love the analogy of consciousness uh, as an ocean, right? And let's pretend consciousness is an ocean. And you could take a thimble uh, or, or a little cup and you could dip it into the ocean and, and take it out. And that cup would be individual. That cup of ocean would be individual of the ocean, but it would contain all that the ocean was inside that cup. And it could rejoin the ocean and, and whatnot, sure. but it's still separate, but still of the same thing, you know? Right. So if we're all individual yeah. glasses of water, our consciousness all comes from the same ocean, and therefore we're one in yeah. that yeah. sense. I think so. It's like uh, consciousness is the dark matter of the brain. Exactly. You know? It's <laughs> yeah. that it's that 90% that's like on the edge of unknowable. It's like, I think we'll be trying to figure out how our brains work until you know, we merge with AI and leave our bodies. Well, uh, Hey, maybe that's the next particle to come out of uh, new physics, the consciousness particle. Well, the spirit DMT is apparently the spirit molecule. So who knows? I mean, that's not a particle. I understand that. But, um, the second part of this question, (laughs) do you think ancient spirits and ghosts like Neanderthals are not documented because they've had so much more time to move on? Mm -hmm. Mm, I think they're not documented because you find what you're looking for and people are looking for, you know, 1800s old timey ghosts and spooky Victorian mansion ghosts. You know, it's like uh, I think we're reflecting on where we came from in that degree, like just the mind collectively together, like. Those are the kind of ghosts we're looking for. And so that's what we see. That, that's what I think. I mean, who says they're not documented? You know what I mean? There isn't there like a Bryce, isn't there a famous seance story where they like like an ape man or almost like a Bigfoot creature appeared in during a seance, like manifested itself? Yeah, I mean, when I hands. think about I think this stuff like ties into and we've been hitting it hard lately, the where the footprints end, which is just up there on my bookshelf. But, um, you know, maybe some of these nature spirits or some of these Bigfoots are actually ghosts of Neanderthals or primordial man sure. that are haunting the woods. I don't know. I'm open Love to that. it. I don't think they've yeah, necessarily cool. moved on, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. You good with that? What Bryce? else you got? Yeah, no. Um, on. Have any of you ever had a premon- <laughs> premonition type of experience? Yeah. Like prophetic dream. I mean, I had that. That prophetic dream sounds so self-important. I, well, you no, know what I mean? No. But I did. I, I talked about it on the podcast where I, I had a dream before the night of 9-10 going into 9-11 mm. about being on a hijacked airplane. And in my dream, it didn't crash. But then... Like I woke up and it was nine eleven, and I was like, it's like to this day, the craziest like dream experience I've ever had. And like, absolutely, it absolutely happened. I, you know, I can't explain it. Wow. It's, it's weird. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I always, oh, go ahead, Michael. <clears throat> oh, uh, I was just going to say I have, but they've always been pretty insignificant. Mm-hmm. Like I remember taking a nap in high school and, having a dream that my dad opened the door, walked in, opened up my blinds, told me to get up because we were about to leave for dinner. And I watched him like march around my room and then walk out the door. And as soon as he shut the door in my dream, 
the door opened in real life, woke me up, and my dad repeated every single step and every single word I had just dreamed. Oh, that's you know, creepy. so I've had stuff Whoa. like that. I also had one where around the same time where I couldn't find the TV remote for my room and I'd searched everywhere <laughs> and I had a dream. I know it's benign. Like I said, it doesn't fucking right, matter. Right. But no, no, it's important. This is why it's like, no, well, but this is <laughs> yeah, why. But I remember the yeah. time being like that. Why this? But I had a dream that I went into my closet dug through my laundry and the remote was sitting at the very bottom of my dirty clothes hamper. And when I woke up that morning, I went and checked and there it was. Now, maybe that was a repressed memory, but I was like, well, yeah, I found something it. in you reaching out like the remote. Yeah. Mom, yeah. But in the waste basket, I must watch television. But I clearly had a dream about it and it there like That's crystal awesome. clear. And there it was. But it's all it's only been sh I've never had anything where I was like, this is major and this is really warning me of something. Mm. Um, but those were the two that jumped mm. out of me and they're completely benign. Yeah, what were you going to say, Bryce? Bryce, oh, I was going to say uh, the thing that comes to my mind was uh, was when I met my wife, Dawn, and I we went to uh, Wreck Beach, which is this this killer beach in Vancouver. And you got to go down all these steps to get there. And uh, and so on the beach, they have these dudes who are naked and they're wearing like fanny packs and like ice cold beer, mushrooms, ecstasy, weed. <laughs> and like, and so I was like, I'll take some mushrooms. Uh, and they can do that, right? Because if cops come down these steps, uh, you know, the bongo players on the beach pl play the theme to Hawaii, Hawaii Five O, so they know the cops are coming. <laughs> and everyone knows Hawaii yeah, Five O. Everyone knows to bury their That's stash. So good. Right? Everyone knows to bury their stash. So, so it's like this, this is like Club Bryce like, vacation. Club Bryce on a yeah. beach, right? Yeah. Spring break and, edition. Uh, it's so trippy. Anyway, I, I took my beach time. club, Bryce. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I, wait, wait, wait. Are you, we've talked about yeah, this. Story, yeah, yeah. I've talked going. about this story before, and I'm kind of yeah. like, and and I'm I don't know, keep going like, though. I love it. You know, I'm on this, I'm on this log, and I'm kind of like looking into the sun on the periphery, and and uh, and it's and I and I something starts talking back to me, right? Like an intelligence, and he says, you know. You will marry that girl, Dawn. And I was like, oh. And I was really worried about, like, you know, I was smoking cigarettes at the time. And I was like, oh my God, I hope these things don't kill me. He's like, don't worry. You will not die from cigarettes. And I was like, okay. Uh, but, and so that was, that was, I guess, I don't know if that's profound. And you were on mushrooms, clearly. I was on mushrooms, yeah. You clearly. I mean, <laughs> clearly, definitely. Whether the prophecy is self fulfilling or not, it was prophetic. Well, it was a moment I had of clarity. I've known her three of days, and it and, and it and it totally came true. I mean, like, oh, you wow. know, so it was it was like it's not something I would have just like thought out of the blue. I mean, this is like this is like it was right. profound information. It was like whoa, and uh, I remember there was like this old kind of scraggly bearded uh, hermit type guy on a log next to me, and I. After that sort of uh, that that prophetic whatever it was, I went over to him. It was like, man, I was like, man, I don't know if you saw that, but you just witnessed something so profound. He's like, get off me! And I was like, <laughs> was like it's so great. I was like, oh man, you, you weirdo. <laughs> But uh, anyway. I love that all of your like stories like this always involves someone like the girl on the phone where you're right, like, you right. know, I know, you know, or oh, like yeah, yeah. this random guy or your buddy who you're like, I'm Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> like, totally, totally. There's always like a, a witness to these it's things. Like it's like, an like agent what are you Smith talking in the about? Matrix? Yeah, exactly. There's always an Agent Smith hanging around. <laughs> um. That's great. We have a few questions on missing 411, which I know Bryce is one of your favorite topics and I've not mm. really dived into or dove dove into dove what I can't dove in <laughs> dove what I think dive, uh, but uh dove. dived into uh dove. I want all the uh, Casey White says missing 411 I want all the deets have I missed this episode somebody else Sirius Silvarum says missing 411 obviously no one really knows what's happening to these people mm. I would be curious to know your thoughts and theories on the matter. Uh, Stephen Meyer Jr. again reminded this listener that we had, uh, and both listeners were reminded that we talked a little bit about it in BCC 61. Uh, and, and then Casey, another uh, listener, uh, 
said, uh, I wish there was a whole lengthy few episodes on it like they did with Roswell. So Mm -hmm. in a nutshell, Bryce, one of your favorite topics comes up a lot, comes up a lot. Um, let's remind which remind which high strangenesses, uh, involved missing 411 and then give us like your, what do you think's going on here? Yeah, right. So I did, uh, I did the, 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 the strange missing case of, I forgot how I titled it, but the, the strange disappearance, the strange disappearance of Dennis Martin with, uh, with spider one as a guest, uh, just Google that and it'll, it'll bring up the exact podcast. But that to me is like the, uh, the gold standard of a missing 411 case. So yeah, I love the missing 411 stuff and it's written by a, a gentleman named David Politis, who was a, an ex detective and cop for, for quite a long time after he retired, he wrote a few books on come to believe it or not. Bigfoot actually he wrote some really great mm-hmm. Bigfoot books stopped. The, and then he was, as the story goes, he was in a, uh, he was in a national park and a couple Rangers had come up to him and they're like, Hey man, uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about looking into this, but you know, there's a lot of disappearances that happen in the national parks and we don't keep record of them. And, and they're fucking strange. You should start talking to some of the search and rescue guys. And that started this journey for David Politas is, uh, of looking into all these strange cases of missing people that take place in national parks. And it wasn't like, hundreds or it was like thousands and they're all so so strange and they they have these certain parameters right like um for instance you know it it's usually nobody hears or sees a thing the weather changes they're usually around a place you know that has like devil in the title whether it's like devil's canyon uh devil's ridge you know uh strange places sometimes they they find these people um, like in these, and sometimes they're children, right? Which is just gets you, man. And, uh, and there's like, they're so far up on a ridge that there's no possible way that they could have hiked up there. You know, sometimes they'll find the clothes like folded and it, it it's all just so strange. I'm fascinated by it because obviously it's the more sinister side to, to high strangeness because, because the stakes are so high. I mean, people, people don't come back, you know? And, uh, so what do you think's behind it? What do you think if you had to take a shot in the dark, man? Well, if you look at that Dennis Martin case, right, it, it, that key family reported seeing a, a man in furs, uh, carrying something over its shoulder. And so, I mean, you know, David Politis will never say it. He doesn't conjecture on these things or he doesn't hypothesize, but, I mean, you make the connection. Here's a guy that was studying Bigfoot and then moved over into this other subject. So this could be like the evil side of Bigfoot. You know, nobody fucking really knows, but but there's something there. Dark matter, Bigfoot. We're on to something here. There. I'm telling you. Yeah. Check out his films. I think they're both on Hulu. Darkfoot. The Missing 411 and Missing 411 The Hunted. Uh, they're great. Love them. They're on uh, Amazon Prime as well. Uh, oh, yeah. I've got them on the watch list that I'll I'll probably never ever finish. But cool. um, um, okay, great. Uh, Waffle Stomper says I've always had a fascination with the strange tales surrounding the Florida Everglades. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about Florida's very own smelly Bigfoot, the skunk ape. But what about some of the other stories of high strangeness coming out of the nearly three million acres of swamps, forests, and marshes of southern Florida? There have been numerous disappearances, so here we are with the 411 stuff. Uh, Unsolved murders, UFO sightings, Bigfoot and Alligator Man sightings, and so on and so forth. Do you think this activity could be connected similarly to the likes of Skinwalker Ranch? Would love to hear what you guys think. Apologies if this has already come up on the show. Also, did anyone catch that damned BBQ dong man yet? He's terrorized enough chicken barbecues already. <laughs> that, of course, is a reference to one of Bryce's secret stash videos over on the other side. I think he's still on the loose. Um, awesome. Awesome. Who knows what the fuck's going on with Florida, right? That's been a question on everybody's mind over the past couple of years. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, I think all this stuff could be connected. I think that there's not just one skinwalker ranch area in the country where 
a bunch of high strangeness collides. Um, there's the Bridgewater Triangle closer to the East Coast. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, there was a pocket of weirdness going on down in Florida. I don't I don't know, though, you know. Yeah, uh, certainly a lot of water down there <laughs> and water, as we sometimes hear, is a big conduit for supernatural activity and and, and things of high strangeness. So I, I, I don't know, uh, but we should probably take a look at some of these other stories and, and try to dig into it. Yeah, I guess the one distinction I would make is, you know, on the on the Skinwalker Ranch, no person was ever really hurt. I mean, cattle and, and dogs, animals were injured or even killed, but but no people, you know, it's when, it's when people get hurt or go missing that it takes, it takes on a new meaning and a, and a new sort of like, uh, just like a, a gut wrenching feeling that like, I hope, I hope that's not related to all this strange. It's one thing to have cattle mutilations, but I don't ever want to see, you know, uh, go the other way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. There's some alien protocols. Certainly don't want it coming for me. Any new black eyed no. kids cases? Uh, SCCT Jared asks. That stuff is creepy as fuck. Um, none that I've come across yet. Uh, Bryce, any new black eyed kid stuff? I mean, we had one in our um, L files not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that was also from a it's while ago. It's kind of creepypasta territory for me. A lot of it is creepypasta territory, although I think the initial sightings that sparked it off with that guy, Brian something, Brian Benson, I believe, something, or Boland, um, that happened in the parking lot, those seem to have some legitimacy around them. But yeah, I think unfortunately yeah. a lot of these have been swallowed up by the creepypasta stuff that's been going around. But that's not to say that stuff that comes up in creepypasta doesn't manifest itself in some sort of tulpa form. You know what I mean? In in mass consciousness. Oh, yeah. So um, we'll keep our eye out for you for sure. Um, Mr. Chelsea Bergman says, request hidden in a question. Have y'all seen NASA the smoking gun? I'm guessing yes, but I would love to hear a deep dive up on it and especially a look into where Martin Stubbs, the guy who captured the footage, is now. There was some question whether he had died or just dropped off the map. Mm. Bryce, NASA the Smoke. This is like a 2003 documentary. I'm assuming yeah. about there's theories that uh, NASA. There's like Richard C. Hoagland wrote a lot about this, didn't he? You know, that there's like the black books, NASA, and they're hiding the truth about aliens and colonies that predate humanity on the moon. Um, lots of like satellite pictures of rocks that look like robot skulls that people point to and say, see, they're hiding the truth. To me, this stuff really treads in conspiracy territory, um, but I haven't given it it's fair shake so mm. i actually haven't seen this documentary i'm curious if if you have bryce or are you yeah Riley, I've seen i assume it. yeah yeah it's really good i mean i it's hard look there's nasa has footage obviously of 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 ufos or uaps you know but we've all seen those videos of of uh of space missions where something that you see you know f fly across the screen and and you know, NASA mm -hmm. really doesn't like to talk about it. And if they do, they'll just say space debris. But but some of these things, some of these objects, they dart like in these patterns that, you know, space to they'll stop and then they'll move in these zigzag formations. And and there's been even a hand a handful of astronauts that have claimed to see UFOs on their on their space missions. So I think that's the that's the film. It's it's an oldie, but a goodie. But, uh, you know, Dan Aykroyd talks on it and. And yeah, Richard C. Hoagland, he was the big guy that was, yeah, yeah, he's, he made a few books about even there being, you know, bases on Mars and, and, uh, and, and the moon stuff too. So it's interesting, but, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. I mean, I have seen that video you're talking about and it does look like UFOs. Um, and, but, and like, yes, there is like a black budget top secret. Uh, development part of the of course government. why would there knows be what they're doing yeah. but but like can we leave the good people of nasa alone like they like i could the, the root of space exploration i think really is genuine and true and i think people are 
it's like the, it's like a, astronauts are like superheroes. I don't know. I, the NASA conspiracy stuff like kind of like gets yeah. to me a little bit, honestly. Like so, uh, you know, I don't know. But I haven't seen that documentary. I don't know anything about it. Uh, but that's like what I think. In yeah, I, that, I was regard. eager to ask that question because I know Riley that stri- always strikes a nerve with you, and, and with very good reason. I would I would say people. Yeah, I mean, there's like there's just like a lot of hardworking people me that like used to build. Yeah, that's what. I'm, yeah, like amazing, uh, like heroes of our time. You know that should be respected. I don't know. There's a like a little kid in me that used to build model rockets and like looks up to all that, and still I still do look up to all that. So you know, I think it should be admired, not admonished. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Uh, Jay Sladen too. At one time, y'all were discussing f- uh, favorite high strangeness stories, and one of you mentioned a story about a hunter being chased through the woods by robotic aliens. LOL. I forgot the county, but did try to find it and never could find anything on it. Uh, I got this one. Eric Q. Olson, who responded, is correct. This is the Cisco Grove encounter. Uh, this was the story of high strangeness I did, and I think that... Um, I'm blanking on who the guest was. I think it was it was Andy Rosen was the guest on it. Mm-hmm. Can't think of the number right off the top of my head, but if you just look C- C- uh, Cisco Grove Encounter, um, that'll I'll come that up. Right um, yeah. Uh, BCC. Cisco Grove. Yeah, so check that out. I think BCC it's in the 25. 50s. Oh, early on. Wow, much Get earlier that. than I thought. So the Cisco Grove BCC Encounter. BCC 25. Rosen. One, of my, one of my favorite, favorite stories. Uh, about a hunter who hit up a tree while robotic aliens tried to uh, gas him and make him fall out of the tree and come up there and get him. <laughs> it's a good uh, one. That is a very perfect example of what I consider high uh, strangeness. Yeah. Um, we all right, we have one way, more. But we still use gas. <laughs> yep, yep. Weird. <laughs> Fuck <thing>. you. <laughs> oh, here's one that uh, drifted by. What's the sexiest cryptid and why is it Mothman from Lyric? Uh, loves pups. <laughs> <laughs> Open and shut mm-hmm. case right there. Yeah, that's, that's all we need to know. <laughs> no argument from us. Is Mothman? I mean, the Mothman statue in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, is fucking cut. I mean, he's he's got those like, <laughs> you know, he's got those V lines. He's very very sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I guess like, yeah. What else would be like an alien gray is not my bag. Uh, might be somebody else's. <laughs> you're not into that. That's a different. No, clearly the there's a lot of people into erotic Bigfoot shit. So I'll just I'll leave that not there. Yeah. Um, well, hey, whatever floats your boat. Those oracles you know? of Delphi think. in the movie 300 were pretty hot. I would. Say, <laughs> is that a cryptid? Sure. Um, <laughs> Counts. Counts. I would say Valiant Thor is probably the sexiest uh, yeah. figure of high strangeness, just because he was like all Don Draper. Uh, decked out. Okay, I have one more question. Uh, let's see here. If I skipped skipped yours, I'm sorry. I'll I'll answer it in the comments section. Um, I just had it, and now I'm trying to find it. Um, oh, here's one. Oh, wow. We literally just got one in here. Okay. Um, or maybe just popped up as I'm scrolling. City man, off the press. Um, we have a Stephen Meyer also requested we have Adela Levine back on the show. Uh, we, obviously, she will be. Um, almost inevitable he wants yeah. qu- answers to questions like where do we go after death do we see our relatives i mean i think you can listen to the f- i mean we all want that answer yeah we're with you <laughs> um and i think if you listen really. to the two episodes main episode she's been on we'll get you know she gets into that so uh this one's from daniel danielle tsb and she asks did bryce ever share his story that shook him so deeply he didn't want to talk about it Bryce, you sort of hinted at this recently, nope. I feel like. Yeah. It's 150 episodes now. Are you yeah. ready to open up and talk about your experience? Because we don't know what it is. Not quite yet, but I've, I'm unpacking it more and more as I think about it. And, and uh, you know, I did have a similar experience that I might be willing to share uh, about nine years ago. And so here's what I think happened to me. And, and this probably will clue you right in, not once, but twice. I feel that I had uh, a spontaneous dimethyltryptamine emission. So we all produce DMT. 
and it's been called the spirit molecule for a reason. And, uh, and you know, most of our organs produce it and it's produced endogeneously, uh, as I was corrected last time, which means our body makes it and it's secreted. They think scientists think during, during deep REM sleep, as well as when you're born and when you're, and when you die. And, uh, and nine years, it's the only, it's the only thing I could think of because, you know, I had what I can only describe as a mystical experience. And, you know, it's, it's funny because there was a lot of shame in that for me. And I don't know why it was like, it was almost like, mm. you know, I'd be okay with, you know, talking about like an, being abducted or something, but, but having this mystical experience almost was like, you know, Ooh, that's, you know, that's, that's delicate ter territory, but it was nine years ago. M mm -hmm. Mystical and, uh, in this. Well, I'll tell you is, is so is like, sorry, sorry ago. to interrupt. M Mystic. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. There's, there's a bit of a lag. There's I just meant mystical in the yeah. sense of it almost religious. You can, if, if you're religious, then yeah, that's how you would put it into context. Uh, so for me, it was. I remember I was really worried about 2012, right? And uh, December 21st, 2012. It was, remember, it was this whole thing. And so mm -hmm, I, was, I totally. was reading a lot on the subject and I was reading a lot of esoteric books and stuff. And I remember I got really into the macro and the micro. And I remember concentrating a lot on you know, as above and so below. And so I really got into just, just going into deep, deep contemplation of, of the subatomic particles and all the space that existed within that subatomic particle. And you could just, and you could just keep going. You could just keep going. And it felt so deep and so big, almost like the universe, something triggered. And I was slammed into this sort of mystical experience where things got real, real buzzy and, and you just, and I had this feeling of, of oneness with the universe, right? I mean like fucking oneness, mm -hmm. right? Like oneness with not just everybody, but with, with all of creation, you know, even the creator is, is, as crazy as that sounds. Right. And it lasted. I don't think that sounds sure. crazy, honestly. Well, it lasted for fucking two to three days and it, it was scary mm -hmm. and, and it, and it wouldn't, and it mm -hmm. wouldn't go away. I remember driving to the airport, I think to, to pick up my brother and I would, and it was like, it was like living in the matrix. It was, I remember, I remember like seeing trees, but not trees, seeing the shadow, like seeing the energy of the root system. When I would look at a tree, I would see, I would see what you didn't see, you know? So, wow. you know that like famous picture of it's on the cover of the uh, the Manly Hall book of of a, of the guy peering outside the veil. Um let me just look it up. So yes. See, yes. See what comes out. It's a famous It's like an old painting. wood wood carving. Yeah. Yeah, right we've used it on there. on uh the out, our out there episodes before over on the other side. I know exactly okay. what you're talking about. It's like an old-timey man from yes. like medieval man. It's like a medieval wood carving. Yes. And he's sort of looking on the outside of our, of our earthly realm to like the other side, because, literally. Uh, because sometimes, you know, that that's the thing about these experiences. And Terrence McKenna would always say, you know, words just fail you. And words fail me because I just can't describe mm -hmm. how it was. But so I, I want to, I want to find this, um, this painting. I know exactly what, which we'll one you're talking up. about. So <clears throat> okay, we'll put it up. We'll find it. This describes the incident more than it. Yes. Oh, of course. More yeah. than anything that yes, I can put I words to. This was my experience, right? Yeah. And it was like my yeah. head was peering outside into another world. And you know how you hear sometimes that like the dream world is more real than the real world. That was the feeling mm -hmm. that I got that, that this, that what I was experiencing, that state that I was in was what's real. That was the real mm -hmm. deal. Right. And that, and that, right. And that can get scary. And that was scary. Right. And then this, this, yeah. and then our existence is, is, is not real is the illusion. 
very esoteric, right? And so it, it all ended in, and it, it was like, you know, those little, you know, those little coin drops that you like for charity and you put a penny down a spiral thing and it goes, woo, 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 yeah. Seem like you know near the bubblegum machines at a restaurant. Yeah. 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 So this is, this is the best way I can describe my experience. It starts with that penny on top and it goes, woo, 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 woo. And by day three, the penny was down here going, and it was just like my head was going to fucking explode. I remember going into my bed and uh, and curling up into a ball. And and as the penny drops, it goes, everything just goes fucking dead quiet. And, and I remember mm-hmm. just having this thought. It was almost like the coming from outside of me, like um, you could end it all here. And it wasn't just when, when I say that it felt, it felt like the entire universe, like rea- I could end all reality now, stop it all, mm-hmm. or I could keep going. And I made the conscious decision to, to keep going and it just, and it turned off and things got back and wow. things slowly came back to normal. Had I made the other decision, I, I don't know. My head might've fucking exploded. I might've had a- right. Uh, I might have gone into an epileptic seizure. Cavall. I could have. Di- I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the universe yeah. would have stopped existing. That's how real it felt, right? But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. you get the sense. You get the sense that that the world is 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 the experience that you're having is for you you alone. Like you guys are just like part of my experience, right? This is the feeling that you get, right? And it and it's the same for you, right? Like I'm just a I'm just a sub character in, in, in the reality that was created for Michael McMillan. And, and the same goes for you, Riley, you know, that it's all this, you're a much you. bigger role in my life than that, Bryce. <laughs> but this, you're, but this is the best supporting actor. Let's this be real. Is the, this is the feeling, right? You've heard that saying all the world's a stage, right? And, 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 mm-hmm. and, and it took on sort of those dimensions anyway. Uh, you know, for a lot of time I felt like, you know, and it was, it was, it was scary for the people around me too, if that makes any sense, you know, but. Well, uh, sure. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a moment where you're like, am I having a psychotic break right now? Yeah, You know what I mean? You would have to. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, I've come to the conclusion that no, it wasn't a, a psychotic break, but it was so the best that I can come up with because I've, I've looked up that type of stuff and I, you go right into re after, after an event like that, you go into research fast and right away that I have a, was this schizophrenia? Sure. Is this psychosis? Like what is, what is, you know, what is this? And, uh, and I was comforted by the fact that, you know, it's not, it's not a common experience, but it's not uncommon either. Right. People do have these types of experiences, but but I think what I've come up with was spontaneous dimethyltryptamine emission, you know, like a like a mm-hmm. secret excretion of this DMT, and it floods your system, and boom, you just get launched. You yeah. get fucking launched. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so so maybe uh, one geez, day. I mean, I I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and so I have obviously you can explain. I mean, that was a big that was a big yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah, you know, and obviously something like <laughs> that happened there. happened again. And uh, I mean, you know, and maybe one day I'll feel more comfortable talking about that. But uh, man, I mean, hope it doesn't happen again in another well, eight years. <laughs> I would just well, I'll tell you what. Every eight like, years, I'll tell you this, Bryce, right away. Like, um. Obviously, that's an intense experience that you, you know, you don't have to share anything you don't want to, and you don't have to share it on the show. This is obviously a safe space for you. I hope, hope it feels that way. And then obviously, if something ever like that does happen again, and you feel overwhelmed, you got two friends right here that you can express what you're experiencing that, you know, we're not going to judge. So even if we're not doing it on the podcast, you know, please feel free to reach out and be like, it's happening and we can oh, God. <laughs> help you, you help you through it. You know, <laughs> well, I tell you what, I, I'm, I will take that call and I'll, I'll go on that journey with you. So I don't, oh, I just don't, you. I just don't want you to feel when you're experiencing something like that, that you feel alone, you know what Never I mean? Cause that's I. gotta Never be a scary, I. and you know what? scary and, and aspect. I'm, too. I'm really glad we've created this community, you know, just, uh, just being able to, 
to to talk about it. It makes me feel a little better about it. And and so I, I'm proud of the community that we've created and the friendships that we've that we've uh, taken on. And 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 so yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, great. I mean, uh, to me, it just it really sounds like you had a spontaneous psychedelic experience. Like I, that has all the hallmarks of it. Like the oneness, the the sense of allowing the universe to collapse, the the stakes of the whole oh, thing, yeah. the the re- the realizing you know the the, the the like levels of existence where you're like oh this is all just an illusion in front of me and like it is to a degree but it's also not and yeah there is like that interplay between like the psychedelic experience mind and psychosis and schizophrenia yeah. and like scary yeah. stuff and that idea of losing control of your own mind or losing that thread to reality you for know? sure so it's really scary but it's also super profound and and the fact that you had an experience like that without like drugs or whatever. I mean, well, who knows what you were doing eight years ago, but, right. no, I, uh, I, but the fact that, just that some weed, it happened. Know, just some weed, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And so <laughs> exactly. I was not doing it. But that can be the yeah. thing, you know, that can be the trigger. trigger. It's like, yeah. you never know what's going to do Same that. But thing. so, I mean, it's nothing to be like ashamed of, you know, like I, I I've had similar experiences where I'm like, am I crazy? <laughs> and it scared me for right. a while. And like, I'm confident that I'm right, not, right. but you know, it's a, uh, I think those are positive experiences. Those are growth and those are sort of exploring like your consciousness and your connection to your surroundings. You know, it's like, it's a positive thing overall. Well, it certainly yeah. changes the way you do look at the world. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 For the better. Great. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Honestly, that's yeah. great. I'm glad. Story. Yeah, it is a great story. And um, thank you to our listeners for asking questions. Here's, here's what I want to do guys. Uh, I want to break now and then we're going to come back and we're going to play uh, the first game of bullshit or believe it that we have in a long time with just the three of us. Perfect. We'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, and I just want to say thanks to all of our listeners who asked those questions. And I want to say thanks to Bryce for sharing that story and reminding our listeners that this is a safe space. I mean, you guys are talking to a guy who's, he and his dog saw an alien outside his window. Okay. <laughs> Nothing is weirder Fair enough. or sounds crazier than that. So uh, I may still have you beat there. Okay. What I thought would be really fun <laughs> since we hadn't done it in a while is play uh, a game that we all know and love, uh, which is to go down a list of phenomenon uh, and say whether it's bullshit or believe it or not. So guys, let's play a little bullshit. Wait. Did you hear that? Bryce, yeah. or do, should, should no, we go I, back since you didn't say believe it? Well, that was like, a, I heard something, man. That was like a what? Oh, yeah, me too. Static verse oh, I went to play the sound cue and then it, uh, it, I don't know. Wait, it what? Like some weird. You didn't hear that? It was weird. It was almost no. sounded like it would, dude, it sounded like a voice. I mean, I couldn't make out the word. Riley, you heard that, right? I mean, can you go back to that? Yeah. I mean, I'd have to stop. The wait a minute. But, um, uh, wait, are you guys serious? I'm confused. No, seriously, I swear to God, I heard like a weird voice yeah, or dude, something. What? Seriously. Yes, yes. Wait, is, is this like a strange, strange, strange thing? Can Br- Bryce, can you no. can you check your connection, Bryce? Yeah, it's not me. Mine's fine. I did see your video like freak out for a second there, Bryce. This it is a new really? thing. I didn't yeah. hear I didn't hear anything. Oh shit. I, did you guys do you guys hear that? No. What? I, 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 no, I don't hear anything now. I don't Bryce. hear anything. I don't, Bryce? Your audio line is going Whoa. crazy. Though. Bryce. Wait, is he fr- Wait, what's happening? What's happening? Bryce, you're frozen. Wait, no, is Bryce, are you? Hey, what? It's been a few months. How are you, Riley and Bryce's weird friend? Uncle Dickie? Yeah. Wait. Uncle Dickie from our Manscaped commercials? But wait, you're dead yeah that's right i'm dead and more alive than ever i just wanted to stop by and let you guys know that the afterlife is positively groovy oh wow whoa (laughs) tell us about it well for one thing we get to binge every episode of every show ever made or ever will be made whenever we want i'm on wandavision season three right now scooby-doo and mr belvedere are now officially part of the marvel cinematic universe Wait, seriously? Yeah. Oh, I knew that multiverse stuff would get out of control. 
Uh, wait, so you, you're just binge watching uh, TV in the spirit realm? Well, a part of me is, Riley. Thanks to the fifth dimension, I exist everywhere all at once now. So I'm watching my stories, chatting with you two nuts, surfing across the starry rim of the Andromeda Galaxy, and making out with the ghost of Donna Dixon all at once. Uh, wait, uh, the, the, wait, that. Ugh. Wait, the Donna Dixon, the actress, I think she's yeah. still alive. Yeah, I think what? she is, yeah. Oh, well, you know, who have I been playing tonsil hockey with then this whole time? You know what? No matter what, <laughs> I just want to congratulate you boys on 150 episodes and let you know that I know it's been a rough year, but things <laughs> are going to be getting better real soon. Well, that's uh, such a relief. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. And, uh... and you know what? You have a solid six years before the singularity hits and the robots take over. So that's nice. Wait, wait, what? Well, let's just say, weird friend of Bryce's, that uh, the robots don't become our sex dolls. It's the other way around, you know? Kind of kind of sad I'm missing out on that. Ugh. I mean, thanks for the heads up, I guess. Uh... All right. I'll be right there. Look. Hey, I gotta go. Wanda and the Vision are officially welcoming the Affleck duck to the MCU. I gotta see if he's secretly Mephisto. <laughs> that show just keeps you guessing, huh? Wow. Well, I- I'm. this is truly shocking. I want to thank you for stopping by, Uncle Dickie, even though you can't remember my name still. But you know what? We'll tell Bryce you said hi. Yeah, tell him I say hi. Oh, and listen, that reminds me. I need to pass along two messages. Number one, please okay. tell that Adela Levine to stop checking in on me when I'm on the toilet. That's my time. I mean, you could just like tell her yourself. She's a medium. That's like her whole deal. Oh, and the other you know? thing, the other thing. I saw you got a comment <laughs> from. Why are you the- smacking your lips? Are you eating something? Yeah, yeah. They got the best Pringles out here in the afterlife. There's all different kind of flavors. I'm doing like barbecue hibiscus crickets. It's really good. Anyway, Ugh. I saw in a comment from uh, one of your Patreons this morning. His name is Danny. Right. First off, I want to thank him for subscribing to the other side and supporting your dorky show. But I didn't really appreciate that he said he hated me and was glad I was dead. So to Danny, I would cordially like to say, I hope you enjoy the shadow creatures because I just gave him your address. (laughs) Okay, Uncle Dickie, please don't harass our listeners with night terrors. (laughs) Hey, I got eternity to kill, boys. Let me have my fun. Sayonara, weirdo. See you on the flip side. (laughs) Ah. Okay. (laughs) All right. Whoa. Some things never do. Whoa. Hey. Bryce, are you okay? I my shirt off. What (laughs) happened? Dude. (laughs) Bryce. Bryce. Are you Are you you, okay? you remember all that, right? Remember like, all what? We're a, doing a bullshit. You, were, you, were, it, right? you were doing a, you were doing a bit, right? That was like a Bryce. You Bryce were possessed bit. by Uncle Dicky. What do you mean I was possessed by Uncle Dicky? Uncle Dicky's ghost possessed you. Oh, that would explain the smell. <laughs> yeah, oh. you mentioned something about Pringles. All oh. right, this is okay. That was too much. For, I think we should just skip bullshit or believe it. Let's get to the story of high strangeness before Uncle Dickie makes a comeback. Okay. Yeah, um, guys. In all seriousness, while while that was happening, my light started blinking. Oh my! It's, whoa! It just did it again. That. Oh. <laughs> you guys all right Uncle Dickie. i'm not i swear to god I, i'm not doing that. i get i get look we're beginning visited by uncle dicky and apparently there's look i got goosebumps right now weird do me too bryce are you okay are you yeah, all right though I feel a little funky but in a good way all right that oh. light is weird <laughs> I want to get on with this. Can we just move on? Because now I'm getting freaked out. Let's yes. just wrap yeah. this no, whole. Let's move on. Let's, uh-huh. move it on. <laughs> let's, let's wrap this whole spectacular yeah. up. Okay. I don't yeah. want to evoke any more spirits. Let's not no, do that. I don't think that would be um, a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, there's, <sighs> there's no easy way to segue out of this. I, I, I think, <laughs> but um, I brought in a story of high strangeness this week. That is going to, I think, 
knock your socks off. This is a very weird story. Uh, another one that I found in uh, the Illustrated History of UFOs by, um, oh my God, I just, uh, Aunt, well, I'm going to have to look it up again. I just forgot. It. I wish I had it in front of me. It's like Andrew Allsuch Boardman, I believe, is the author and illustrator of it. So we talked a little bit about it uh, during a Northern Frights episode over on the other side. But, um, well, let's just begin this way, shall we? Beware of the blob. <laughs> it creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor, right through the door and all around the wall. A splotch, a blotch. Be careful of the blob. Ooh. Sounds like one of those so mirror cool. curses you have to do three times. Yeah, and then a blob <laughs> shows up. Yeah. Anyway, those are the lyrics from Mac David and Burt Backrack's jazzy surfs up style opening theme song performed by none other than the five blobs over the opening credits to the 1958 classic horror movie, The Blob. <laughs> it was a goofy, upbeat, monster mash style hit that almost seems out of place for a movie about a slimy, amorphous alien creature that hatches out of a meteor and begins to devour a small American town through the gelatinous digestation, growing in strength and size with each oozing consumption of innocent townspeople. But I guess with the name like The Blob, it's hard to take it too seriously. But what if I told you that that very same year that Paramount Pictures unleashed the blob in unsuspecting American theaters on September 12, 1958 to be exact, two men would have an eerily parallel encounter outside the town of Domston, Sweden, facing down an amid <laughs> amoeboidal like it's a very hard word to say <laughs> an, am, an amoeboidal it, it's, it's almost an onomatopoeia an amoeboidal uh, uh, attackers from another world and they'd barely make it out alive to tell their story this is the truly strange tale of the Domston blobs hmm the story of the Domston Blobs begins like many UFO encounters in a car driving down a highway at night. Now, on this particular night, December 20th, 1958, two Swedish men, Hans Gustafsson, 25, and Stig Rydberg, 30, were driving from Hoganus to Helsingborg after a rowdy night out with their girlfriends. Their destination? Gustafson's mother's house, a woman by the name of Anna say, Bergman. They didn't, go, they didn't go home with their girlfriends? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I know after a long night of partying with the ladies, I'm going straight to mom's house. <laughs> now, exactly why these two virile young Swedes were ditching their girlfriends in one city to sleep at one of their mother's houses in another one is anyone's guess, you guys. I mean, I suppose it was the 1950s and it was the decent thing to do. Sure. Plus, Good Swedish boys. Yeah, plus they both worked for Anna's dry cleaning business so perhaps they were headed back to face the holiday rush mm. at any rate the road was foggy that night and visibility was low so Gustafsson was driving at a slow pace doing his best not to crash his car on the way home and possibly possibly trying to override a glug filled buzz don't drink and drive kids at around 3 a.m. the two men Hans and Stig decide to pull over for a quick pit stop to piss in the ditch just outside the town of Domston. As the party boys relieve themselves, they peered across the way, and they noticed a reddish-orange glow emitting from the tree line in the early morning haze. 3 a.m., so we're here, right, we're, we're right in the pocket of high strangeness. Yeah. Curiosity getting the better of them. And assuming there was perhaps some kind of fire erupting in the woods, the two men zipped their respective flies and marched towards the source of light. As they approached the woods, they passed a no camping sign along the way, which is going to come in uh, handy in a bit. And when they reached a clearing, Hans and Stig were shocked 
to discover not a forest fire, but a disc shaped object seemingly made of light about three feet high and 15 feet in diameter resting atop three thin legs as landing gear. Hans would later explain Bryce, if you'd play the role of Hans for us, please. Yeah, sure. We saw a strange disc. It was resting on legs about two feet long. It seemed to be made of a peculiar shimmering light that changed color. Within moments of... Kind of more German. (laughs) Well, Well, you know, my mother's mother was German. (laughs) My name is so we moved into Helsinkingberg when I was just a little boy. (laughs) I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Within moments of taking in this mystical and strange craft, Hans and Stig were surrounded by a pack of billowing amoeba-like entities at about three feet in height, dancing about in the air. Mm-mm. Stig said, <laughs> They were like protozoa, just a bit darker than most sort of a bluish color, hopping and jumping around the saucer like globs of animated jelly. What at first like seemed... Awesome. Protozoa. <laughs> protozoa. I, I like that too. It's like, you know, like protozoa. Everyone knows what protozoa, like protozoa is. Like. <laughs> it was like protozoa, Hans? Oh, yeah. yeah it's, protozoa. I'd say like protozoa. Well, yeah. Protozoan, for sure. They're yeah. like these... They also <laughs> describe them as being like loaf-shaped. So there's these, there's these like three-foot-tall blobs. They're just blobs. Yeah, and dude, they're dancing blobs. around, doing this almost like ritualistic dance near the UFO in midair. Now, what at first seemed like a benign encounter with mystical beings became a sudden terrifying attack. The blobs swarmed Hans and Stig, wrapping their jelly-like bodies around their legs and arms with incredible force. Stig would claim that the sensation felt like the beings were made of some kind of magnetic dough. Mm. The the two men began fighting for their lives, tugging at their arms and legs, breaking free only to swing at the blobs and get swallowed up again, the creatures engulfing their punching fists up to their elbows. During the fight, Hans and Stig were assaulted with a terrible stench emitting from the primordial soup monsters, and with a st- with a strong suction-like force, the blobs began dragging their victims helplessly towards the saucer of light. Hans described it like this. Mm, that's me. <clears throat> Hold on. The drag the things exerted was terrific, and they gave off such a terrible smell, like ether and burnt sausage. A game of alien tug of war ensued as the two men would break free, only to be latched onto by another gluey entity. As the the abduction unfolded, Hans and Stig could see that the other blobs could see the other blobs dancing about them in a strange intergalactic ballet. Whatever these entities were and wherever they came from, they were predatorial and they were winning the fight. Stig said, it almost seemed as, as if the creatures could read my mind. They parried every move before I made it. Their strength was not so great as the technique with which they wielded it. (laughs) Stig managed to break free, and he made a run for the car. As he fled his gelatinous attackers, he looked back to see Hans desperately clinging for his life, grasping onto the no camping sign as the floating blobs hoisted his legs parallel to the ground and yanked for dear life. Stig, positive that his friend was going to end up dead, or worse, made made it to the car, screaming, tears streaming down his face, and laid on the horn, hoping that someone, somewhere, would hear his desperate cries for help. Oddly, this seemed to be the action that ultimately saved both of their lives. As soon as the horn blared, the blobs released Hans and stampeded back to the woods and into the craft. Hans scrambled back to the car just in time to witness the UFO streak up into the sky with an ear-piercing whistle. Mm. 
Only five minutes had passed since the assault had started, but for Hans and Stig, it felt like an eternity. They sat in their car and sobbed, their adrenaline rushing. Finally, they were able to compose themselves and return to Hans' mother's house. When they got there, they both agreed that they wouldn't tell anyone what happened. They'd surely be laughed at. For the next few days, the men didn't sleep. They had trouble eating. They experienced symptoms of PTSD. And finally, on the third morning after the attack, they broke down over breakfast and told Hans' mother, Anna, and his brother what had happened. At first, they laughed at them, just as the men feared. But when they realized the emotional state the two men were in, and I assume after observing how strange they must have been behaving for the past few days, Anna quickly switched gears and and contacted the local newspaper so the men could report their harrowing tale. I love that she laughs at them, and then she's like, maybe not enough people are laughing at you. Let's get more people in on this. (laughs) Let's tell everyone in the world. (laughs) There's a theory that maybe she told this story because she thought it might be uh, good advertising for the dry cleaning company. Uh, But as the men were in her... uh, where did I? I lost my place? Okay. So what f- followed next is mostly lockstep with other UFO close encounter stories. The men told their story and stuck to it. The local law enforcement got involved and interviewed the two men. And much like Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson, who suffered from the Pascagoula abduction, they left the two men alone in an interrogation room and recorded them in an attempt to catch them plotting a lie. But even in private, the men spoke in earnest of their terrifying abduction attempt. They were medically examined and psychologically profiled over the course of a few days. Skeptics and law enforcement tried to find a crack or flaw in the recounting of their story, but Hans and Stig never wavered. They were found to be of sound mind and body and diagnosed as victims of trauma from an unknown origin. Hmm. The men were interviewed by Swedish ufologist Gosta Wren, who, fucking badass name, by the way, who found their story to be genuine, despite the fact that the Swedish military wrote the whole thing off as a hoax. Wren was fascinated with the descriptions of the creatures, especially their ability to float and undulate in the air. Bryce, you want to take a stab at uh, Gosta Wren's quote for us? An acceptable explanation of the creature's ability to fly may be that the UFO, through a surrounding gravitational field of electrical origin, may have created swirls or similar concentrations of energy. As for the skeptical listener hearing this tale and saying to themselves, Are you kidding me? Come on, Michael. You said it yourself. The movie The Blob had just opened in theaters back in September of that year. Surely these were just two drunk Swedish fuckboys who confused... (laughs) Who confused (laughs) Mist for a camp classic movie monster from a Steve McQueen movie. (laughs) Well, listener, to you I say, maybe, but here's one thing to counter the argument. The Blob had opened in the US, but it wouldn't be released in Sweden until January 25th, 1960, over a year, a year and a month after this story took place. That's the thing about Europe. They always get our pop culture a little bit later. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's the that's thing. thing about Europe. Uh, that's the, thing. Next, the only thing. That's, that's the thing. That is the thing about that's Europe. It. Guys. Sums it up. They got friends like two seasons after we did. Next time you're running late on your way home from a jovial evening and ditch your girlfriends to stay at your mom's house. <laughs> and you feel like you need to pull over uh, on a misty road and take a leak in a ditch, please heed this warning. Beware of the blob. For you may not be as lucky as Hans and Stig. Mm. And that is the harrowing tale of high strangeness of the Domston blobs. Domston. 
horn. <clears throat> if it wasn't from, if it wasn't for the horn of my Volkswagen Scirocco, we would have never made it out of there. <laughs> oh, we'd all be we'd dead. We'd all be dead. And covered in sticky blob. <laughs> <The> blob. <laughs> Guys. Sticky magnetic electro blob. <laughs> sticky magnetic bread. <laughs> that's that scene though man like i want to see that i want to see someone make that it's yeah. like a music video or something they're all surrounding the ufo yeah. i can Bob's see it and then them latching like, on countering like, their motions yeah, it's, it's very on. comic booky oh, it's very like him punching yeah. and then getting like sucked yeah, into it, it I mean, anticipates yeah. it yeah and the things like what a scene and then yeah breaking for the, the car like <laughs> i'm not so strong but i'm fucking agile dude so don't fuck with yeah. me. you know what blah, i mean boo, blah, boo, blah, boo. you're getting in our our ufo of light one way or another mm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a wild story i i like this blob creature thing it's very uh, i do too so at know. the back of this book like the illustrated history of ufos there's like a great diagram of all these different aliens from all these different encounters. And I saw this one that looked like this weird blob. And I was like, what is this from? And uh, that's how I've tracked down the story. Um, uh, it's hard to find a lot of information about it. I pulled this together from some Wicca, you know, cr- uh, cryptid wikia and a cryptonaut. Um, this guy, I think his name, Rob Mowry wrote an article on it. I'll, I'll throw up some links if you want to check it out. Uh, and the, and the quotes come from, uh, that book via or uh, that article via a book called uh, Strangers from the Skies, which is a classic UFO book that uh, I, as I was studying the story, I tried to order off Amazon, but wouldn't arrive until after this episode was aired. So but it's a book I definitely want to check out. Uh, the lesson here being that, dude, we have barely scratched the surface of some of these stories over in Europe and we've got so much wild shit and this is right in the middle this is in you know this is in the 50s and there's all this weird shit i'm finding from like the 70s that like really fit into that like john keel high strangeness sweet spot and that's why i wanted to pick this story for the 150th episode because it's fucking weird dude yeah it'd be great if there's some like european boys who wanted to get together and start a european bigfoot collectors club we'd, we'd give them permission to do so we'll franchise it out yeah exactly <laughs> well, i don't know so what the hell is this what do you guys think this is is this alien is this ultra terrestrial what are we looking at here all of the above yeah, dude. i mean if we're getting into blobs and ufos this is like this is full high strangeness full throttle yeah, and just Oh uh, yeah, it's it's ultra terrestrial. It's extraterrestrial. It's uh, consciousness observer based. It's all of the all of the things. I even wondered if these were some kind of drones as well, some sort of artificial intelligence. Like send the magnetic blobs to go gather stuff. You know that maybe these are just sort of some sentient energy form that's just meant to go snatch and bring shit back to the mothership. You know, yeah. well they they're failed. like little blobby hunters. They weren't expecting. They failed, uh, do they? The- the horn of the Shiraka. <laughs> <laughs> but how many times have they succeeded? And maybe yeah. in some of these mm. missing 411 cases. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're exactly right. Yeah. Who knows? Wow. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up uh, BCC 150. Uh, I want to thank ourselves for being here. Um, <laughs> let's take a quick moment to plug uh, our shit. Why not? Riley, Bryce, why don't you start off? Sure. Find me on social media. I'm at Mr. Bryce Johnson on Instagram and Twitter and uh, go to the DPCU game to play my adult picture cover up game and watch Expedition Bigfoot on Discovery Plus seasons one and two available now. Fantastic. Right right on. Uh, Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Peace Drone. I, I do it now sometimes. I like it. I'm into it. Thank you guys for getting me going on that. Uh, Spindrift album is in presale. It it I the lacquer has now been cut apparently, and is the whole long process. But it will it will come out this year. I promise. Probably June now. I'll have a firm date. Oh, soon. great. But okay, great. It's coming. It's coming for real. It exists. It's it's coming. So you can go pre order that at alternativetentacles.com. Fan. Fantastic. Um, guys, follow me on Instagram at McMills, also on Twitter. I'm mostly on Instagram. And do me a favor, 
please follow me. Uh, my commercial agents tell me if I hit 30,000 followers, I might get some work opportunities <laughs> sent my way. Oh, is that what and it let me tell you. 30,000? Uh, oh apparently. Uh, Social and, currency. I, uh, wow. Let me tell you what. Uh, after a year of the pandemic, I need the work. Um, but uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, just follow me over there. I'm posting pictures of movies that I watch and my dog. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, you know, the occasional fun shit. Um, and then do us a big favor, uh, check us out over at BCC, the other side, the Patreon, uh, where we'll be throwing up this video if it comes through and, uh, future videos. And we, we drop three to five bonus episodes every month. We're covering every episode of expedition season two. We're recapping it with Bryce. We have so much content dropping over there right now. Uh, check us out, come by for, give us, give us one month, try us for one month, yeah. drop five bucks see how much stuff is over there if you don't like it you can fuck off that's fine it won't hurt our feelings but <laughs> there's so if you like this episode with as much as riley was chiming in you'll really dig what we're doing over there on the other side um it's really become an extension of 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 the regular show so we'll see you over there uh and then finally if you don't want to do that there are other ways you can support the show uh go to apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review if you do uh, not only will it help boost our algorithm and find new listeners we we might read it right here on the air like this one from hips don't lie 187 uh don't murder <laughs> anybody with those hips uh, uh he or she says or they say can't stop listening five stars i can't stop listening to these hosts their guests and all of their stories the best thing about them is that they are serious about the paranormal but don't take themselves too seriously so they are highly entertaining but also able to deliver a paranormal story and discuss paranormal theories with great eloquence i'll be listening as long as they keep releasing the show Let's hope All they right. never run out of stories of high wow. strangeness. Five stars. I mean, what a beautiful uh, anniversary yeah, gift. That's, uh, hips don't lie. That's everything we hope to do, really. You know? Yeah. Thanks for telling Sorry, the Michael, truth. Go, no, no, I was just saying. That's yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, boys. Yeah. Uh, I guess this is it until next week. Ooh, should I tease that? Um, I think I will. We're going to be doing another deep dive <laughs> real soon. So uh, get ready, guys. <laughs> Uncle Michael's cooking something up for you. Uh, a classic cryptid deep dive. All right, we'll see you next week. Until then, good night. And go get regret. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month.